So we're here in the WAMDA booth with JC Butler, the founder of Dubizzle, a one of the biggest classified sites in the region, basically. JC, how are you? I'm doing very well. What are you enjoying at Arabnet? Well, I, I just got here, so pretty much the coffee so far. Um, but no, it's it's great to you know can touch base once a year and network with all the people throughout the region in the web space and it's just a really fun buzz and you see faces that you haven't seen for a while and catch up and it's a lot of fun so yeah, it's like a I like it. Yearly pilgrimage. Um, so talk, let's talk about Dubizzle's wild growth. You guys started in 2005, you went regional in October 2010. Um, how have you managed that process of growing from a startup to a medium-sized company? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a very tough process, um, and we were talking earlier that it's something that isn't talked about a lot here in the region. Um, I think right, the focus is very much startup, but, there, but going from startup to medium-sized company while still st staying agile, still staying fresh, um, and still being able to constantly reinvent yourself uh, is a big challenge and uh, is one that we've had to face, and we've had to have kind of numerous soul searches uh, through, throughout the uh, throughout the, the journey, I guess. Um, talking about how you do that, you know, I'm actually a really big believer in the, the whole lean startup philosophy, um, which if you, haven't, if you haven't read it and you're watching WAMDA, you're probably an entrepreneur, so you should read it. Um, and it's, it's basically a philosophy of, of, of staying, staying agile, and it works for obviously a startup, but also you know, large companies, one of the greatest case studies is the case study of Intuit, which is thousands of employees and how they kind of reinvented themselves to behave like a startup um, and, and had huge amounts of success by doing that. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of what, what we're doing is getting back to those roots of, you know, lots of trial and error, um, lots of um, just quick feedback, you know, quick feedback and learning from your mistakes, but being willing to make uh, lots and lots of mistakes um, and, and iterate quickly. And uh, I think that one of the most important things when you become a larger company is that that's quite difficult is to really empower the the people that you have um, and and the way you know the way to do that how, how to do that is tricky and, you know every company's got to figure out the best way to do that for themselves but once you can do that once you can kind of uh, you know release the the, the decision-making power and the ability to innovate and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes from you know just the co-founders uh, which is the way it is in a small startup team but once you're able to kind of make everybody in the organization an entrepreneur things start happening so much more rapidly and and you you start behaving like a startup even though you're you know 70 100 150 people so to get into the details of that i mean what did you focus on is it encouraging a certain mindset is it having a certain team size is it encouraging a certain kind of bottom up feedback um, is it just institutionalizing the way information gets conveyed within the company? How did you? You know, I, I, I don't know if it's the same for every company, but for us, I think that the important thing is is um, a mindset of kind of like the scientific process of like create a hypothesis, create a test environment, test, and then learn from that. You know, and and, and really recognizing your own assumptions. And once you do that, then you become much more, uh, much more relaxed about anybody making making an important decision. Because if, if you can measure it, they can you can discuss. Okay, what are our assumptions? What are the assumptions we're testing? What are the risks here? Test it, and and uh, you know you, you can you start to realize that that good good ideas can come from from anywhere, and you feel like you have a strong grip on knowing if you're going down the wrong avenue and if you need to switch course. Um, so, you know, for us, you know, I, th I think it's about really good measurement, really good um, statistics, and, and then, yeah, you know, I guess just having the mindset of everybody really understanding that kind of like scientific process of what are my assumptions and how, how am I going to, you know, test this and make sure that um, the test is valid, you know, and I know what variables I'm testing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, oh. Go ahead. Have you, um, the, one of the biggest challenges I hear startups talk about is just finding talent. Have you, ha as you've scaled, have you had difficulties finding talent? Have you had to train people? Have you had to do a lot of internal training to cultivate this mindset? Um, finding talent is, 
it's difficult. I mean, I wouldn't say it, it's like, it's just, it's time consuming. It, it's a lengthy process. And you need to, if you really want to find the right people, you need to interview lots and lots of people. And you shouldn't hire somebody that you're like, oh, yeah, I, I think they could do a good job. You know, only hire the person that's like the perfect fit where you come out of that interview room and you're like, oh my God, I love this person. We need to have them on our team. Um, and, and that'll happen. You just need to, uh, it takes time. And you, and you need to be aware of how much time that takes and you really, really need to focus on it and put, you know, recruitment as, as a priority. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have, I think that we have fantastic talent. I don't think that, you know, a lot of people complain that talent's hard to find in the region. I don't think we'd have any better talent if we were in Silicon Valley than, than we do uh, here in the Middle East. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but it's by no means impossible. Surmountable, good. And just finally, um, how do you stay agile with your product? Are there any big changes that you've made to do Bizzle as you get bigger and kind of, you know, smaller sites come along, like in the job recruitment market, for instance, you know, Le Moon, Bradbury, um, and other just classified ad sites throughout the region that you're competing with locally. Um, how do you stay fresh? You know, I think the way to stay fresh again is to, you know, what we've done recently that is really, really exciting is as you grow you tend to kind of your uh, your departments tend to become silos and you know you go from a team of three people where everyone's in one room and everyone knows what's going on to a team of you know 70 we have 75 people in the head office and all of a sudden you've got the marketing department and the tech department and the sales department and you know they're doing one thing and they're doing something else and how do they communicate and so it can become this like cumbersome beast um, and what we've done is made these cross-functional teams where we figure out what are the things that really matter. And then the, there's people from the different departments um, on each team. And so they're, the metrics that they care about um, isn't something that's their whole department. It's actually them, they're on a team with people from other departments. And these people are the stakeholders um, you know, for, that represent their department. And they can make decisions. you know. And, the, and really what keeps us agile is lots and lots of little changes, innovation coming from every brain in the company, and just testing. So, so little changes, testing, iteration, little changes, testing, iteration. Great. My phone's ringing, I'm sorry. Well, no, <laughs> Thank, I mean, thanks for chatting with us at Wanda. Really appreciate it. It's been great, thanks a lot.